Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. My name is Blake Cousins, and in this episode, we're gonna cover an amazing topic, free energy. Does John Cyril have the answer to the energy global crisis? He claims he does, and he's had it for over 60 years. John Cyril is known as the godfather of free energy, zero point energy, and he claims he has the answer to resolve the global energy disaster happening right now on planet Earth. And we're gonna go over this amazing documentary simply known as The Machine. Now let's get to it right now. In the laws of nature, there is nothing impossible except that the state of your mind makes it so. An energy is a device that converts the energy around you, that's everywhere, into useful energy, what we call electricity. The generator is a magnetic device that is uh, totally magnetic. It is its own prime mover. It will self-start and continue to run. And as far as we know, we can say never stop. We have something here that needs to be investigated. And really, that's my role. I am a technical investigator of the SCG. The difference is I'm not willing to sit and just make an opinion. I'm going to make it happen. The generator is approximately two foot in diameter by about eight inches high, and it can be put in the home to power your your home. You could be putting your automobile to power your automobile. And many of the uh, third world countries have no means of generating electricity. These units could be put in there and power whole communities. You really have to take a look at each individual component and function. And when you step back, you say, wow, this thing works. There's too much for it. To, uh, there's too many facets involved not to be something viable. For over 60 years, John Searle has tried to give to the world a new kind of energy system, one that would free mankind from the burdens of oil and fossil fuels. Cleaning up this planet is going to be a big job. If we're going to get the climate back to what we want, a lot of work will be done. But one thing is certain, you need energy. That's important. So relatively speaking, it is positive here, negative out here, air is ionized, current draws in the back of the center, and you have completed the circuit. This is Amy, just one of an uncountable number of negatively charged electrons seeking a positive destination. She finds the positively charged neodymium core irresistible and enters the Searle converter device, becoming part of an enormous reservoir of electrons. Inside the neodymium, Amy meets Neo, an electron from the neodymium core. These electrons are drawn to the powerful magnetic flux line penetrating the four layers in the Searle design. They join together, forming a boson pair, as they spin around the magnetic force, releasing them on their pathway to freedom. As they enter the gate layer, they are compressed, feeling pressure to exit the system. At the same time, they are pulled and accelerated by the magnetic layer. Their energy continues to increase, racing through the emitter layer, joining trillions of other boson pairs that form the eddy current on the surface of plate one. The boson pair is captured by the roller and blasted into the positively charged neodymium core of the second stage plate, repeating the activity into the third stage of the serial device. With tremendous energy, Amy and Neo are hurled forcefully into standard coils, where they are collected in the same manner as any generator of electricity. Nothing is created or destroyed. The circuit is complete. As the rollers move, they provoke electrons to migrate through the four layers of the plate. From the neodymium core, through the gate layer, the magnetic layer, and the emitter or copper layer. This activity repeats through the rollers and the plates. 
Unlike conventional generators, the electrons will be moving at extremely high velocity. Conventional currents are slow currents, and they build up heat. The more current you draw, the more heat you get. This system is the opposite. The more current you draw, the colder it gets, for this reason. At the quantum level, the electrons are riding the magnetic field, not hitting the lattice of the atoms. The electrons find their path between atoms undisturbed, so they accelerate to higher and higher speeds. Could Professor John Sill's device change the world as we know it and shut down the major corporates ruling the world right now with the control over the people and the soaring energy cost? Now let's get back to the program right now. The evidence is right here on this tape. We'll be doing more demonstrations in the future. And remember, this plate don't have low voltage on it, yet some energy must come across here to this coil so that the electrons come across the back of the roller to here. We have proved here that there is no electric supplied by that ring to make those rollers, but it has to be the internal tension of the atom that makes them move. I'd like to show the mathematics we use. The law of the square says there are two prime states in everything in the universe and they're opposites. Now what I've got to do is make sure that each line comes to the same value. to say it's impossible to do. Really? But well, we're going to show you. They're wrong. Stay tuned for more updates of the free energy device known as the machine created by Professor John Cyril and we will be doing more updates so subscribe now. And if you've captured anything amazing in regards to UFOs, you can contact Third Phase of Moon via Skype or Facebook. My name is Blake Cousins and we'll see you again. Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. My name is Blake Cousins and in this episode we're going to discuss free energy. Bradley Lockerman, filmmaker biographer, visited Professor Searle in the United Kingdom, carrying with him two of the most asked questions to Searle. First, if you could do it then, why can't you do it now? And second, what happened with you with the electric board, the court case, and possible prison term? Even though Professor Searle is 81 years old in age, he still bristles at the questions when asked. Now, in this groundbreaking interview, you will see John Searle's emotions, the heartache, the troubles, and the danger he has gone through to try and get this information out. Why are the distractors bent on taking down and destroying John Searle's ideas? Whatever it is, Dr. John Searle has done something extraordinary. 
Now, Dr. John Searle, in his own words. And the answer is too elementary. It's not 1946. If it was, I could do it. We had the right place, the right time, and the right staff. We have to rebuild all that before I'm in the right place at the right time. At this moment, I'm in the really wrong place to make a number of SEGs to show at different points of the earth would cost a lot of money today. I know from experience that is not possible because the sheer cost today. Tomorrow is even more dearer. Ten years from now, it will be a million pound more to do. Each year it will jump because everybody wants more and more money. That means companies up the immediately their goods, the country act, or they sack the stock. So, or they close down completely, which is happening everywhere now. We create that situation by our demands. Instead of doing a prophecy, get together, look at the main problem, all get together and clear that problem, look at the next one, clear that. It's us that got to create tomorrow's. So the longer you wait, now I've warned you this from 1946, the more it will cost you. It is not free because the gods don't give me the materials free. You have to work for get workforce to get. They need wages. And boy, today they want real wages. Not pennies or cents. They want to see a wage pack of many thousands a year. You wouldn't work for nothing. But I have had people from the good of their heart that have worked with me for nothing, and some still do. And that shows that still left in the world today are some real human beings who appreciate what the condition is like, and that here is one man who is trying to bring together people to achieve what is urgently needed. Unfortunately, uh, two mental conditions come together. One is called greed, the second one is ignorance. When they combine, that's it, let's go buy to very important, urgent well, product we should badly need because people will not sort of pay that money to these greedy people to do it. They recognise and therefore, what can I do but say, right, all I could do is sit back and say, what? When you wake up to reality and said that we're ready to go, then I can get back to work. If you don't want me, you don't have me, I'm not forcing anyone. It's a free world and it's up to you to create the world you want. In the Mortimer area, these houses had to employ an electric company to see to all the servicing of the electrical condition. They supplied a big boiler to do your washing in. All you had to do is pour the water in, switch on, and when it got to the temperature, do your washing. Now, uh, eventually, an element will go. That's natural because we are burning positively. So we'll get deterioration. So this happened. So I told the wife to ring the electric board to come out and fix it. Well, they came and took it, and I kept ringing about when will they bring it back. Eventually they brought it back, and right stuck it in this was late evening. So we did do any washing that night. The wife asked me to heat it up for her before she get up, and then she could put the washing straight in. So. Proudly I filled the boiler and of course I was switched on, I expected to go to work and I said, my, that's a flat. The meter disappeared, the fuse box disappeared, the table with the kitchen light on disappeared, the bomb shade, everything disappeared and nothing, no electric. I told you I have to ring the electric board and she did and when I got there they were just packing up to go home. I said, no, there's no electric. Oh, that's the 40 white present, Danny. 
Really? I said to the young chap, go and get your boss. And I told him I wanted to stay here. I want your boss here. When the boss arrived, he said to the this, this, this torture, what's the matter? He wanted us to go home. Why? He said he wants that boiler turned upside down. He wants to see inside of it. In the end, I said to him, I, before any of you go, I want that bottom took off while you're here. So I said, oh, for God's sake, turn it over. Take that bottom off. Ah, I see. What do you see? Oh, we said, we'll fix it tomorrow. We'll have it back tomorrow. You will have no bills. Well, the, what they went they done, they put the earth well, well, to the live connection, the live to the earth. It was absolute maximum power in that flash, but that blew everything out. Now, had that been a private shop, I would have checked everything myself. But the next one board, gosh, I must say, you don't expect anything. Now, the wife was there, she'd been leaning over there, for some more, turn the switch on, she'd been electrocuted. And then they tell me, there won't be no bills. And what happened is, they sent a bill to, to, the, to me, I just ripped it up. Then they sent it to the council, who then sent it to me. Then they still in audit, their solicitor wrote, and wrote to me, and then I got on the phone immediately and said, good, I'm looking forward to this. You don't know who I am, do you? I was in charge on the electric board up in the Midlands. I said, and I am prepared to take even a lie detector test to prove what I'm saying is true. I'd love to get you on the stand and tear you apart. They got on, he said, oh, I'm not having nothing to do with it. He got on the next, next one and said, I, I'm washing my hands of this. You haven't a chance on earth. Well, eventually it all comes. What did it mean they were looking for something to get revenge? And of course, when I went about this money, they kept demanding £400. I told Chapman, the boss at Baston Road, I don't pay, I don't owe this money. I said, I want the part back on. Oh, we are the electric board, because it's a government. We can do what we like with you. No. And I saw all these people, who have, old people, having the electric turn off because they couldn't pay the bill. No. So I said to him straight then, I hit you. You and who else? That's me. That's me. Well, we are the electric board, and nothing you can do to us. But we'll see, we'll see. And of course, then for six, six months, I kept them on the hop. I made them really work hard. But they kept calling the CID, but the CID happened to be one that Scotland Yard used to work on my team unknown to me, to see if this was a con or not. And he knew, working with me, I wouldn't do nothing that would hurt anyone. But realised I was teaching Chapman a lesson. The judge did try to make it clear to that top electrical man representing the electric board that you asking me to make this man pay this bill that was ten thousand seven hundred something pounds. I can't do that because you asked for what you got. He never stole nothing. He never hurt no one. He just made you work. You said there was nothing he could do. He proved you were wrong. Now the trouble now is that what do we do to protect you? Because they are going to hound you to an ask for probation service if there was a safe house. And they said, no, all houses are loaded. He said, well, we can't send him home where he's not wanted. They're, they'd be hounding him. And we know he was only playing. And we know and from this letter, he won't be playing next time. And they're going to pester him. So we have to protect him somehow. The best thing to do is we'll put him in prison for them to cool off. 
But I was treated that if I was on holiday. Never shirt. I was brought in lovely chops, lamb, lamb and chops and that, and big bottle, uh, the milk bottle of milk and that. I could have anyone in with me in the afternoon. We used to play chess and that. They looked after me. And uh, you know, on Christmas Day, I didn't eat or drink. The water had come running in and asked me, please eat. Now, today is a family day. I have no family. Today, I don't eat. We'll have to write your wife and tell you you're on hungry side. I said that wouldn't make no difference to her whatsoever. And I didn't eat or drink that day. The barrister said to me straight, you appeal and they release you immediately. And you then come to the appeal court and tell them precisely what you did, why you did it. They would then say that Chapman actually challenged you to do it. And you prove to him that he had a wrong attitude, he had a wrong understanding that because he's part of the government, that nobody can do nothing to him, that you really taught me that. And you've been released, they would have just released you. Case dismissed. But I said, no, I, don't to, I want to see really if I had a family at all. And the evidence clearly show I had no family. So it meant that I would shortly be walking out and finding somewhere else. 31 years I stuck hell and that, trying to feed them, and they stole money from me while I was at work. When they're overseas, they'll sell my stuff and probably got nothing hardly for it. It was dubbed the machine, and Dr. John Searle claims he has it and does and has been working on it for over 60 years. Regarded as many, the godfather of free energy, energy of zero point energy, and we're here with special guests all the way from the UK. Get ready guys, we're here right now live with Dr. John Searle. Thanks for joining us right here at Third Phase of Moon. You'd be welcome on your show. Well, it's a real pleasure having you on the show, and it's amazing with Skype and this technology that we're able to do this right now. We want to get the word out about this free energy device, and the first question I have for you, what is it going to take to start mass producing these things and getting it out to the general public, you know, in places around the world that need this energy where places can't have it? Come here. I don't care people appreciate the problems ahead of us on the energy side. They have not faced a serious disruption in the odd places like New York. That's not enough to wake people up. What we need is a situation where the whole country lost power for a week or more. Then they wish they had their TG. Then they'll be crying for their TG then we'll be ready to give it to them. But if you're waiting for the day when there's no electricity, then when it hits you, you're crying. Unfortunate, I can't do nothing if we haven't got the machines in mass production. It takes everyone putting together to make it happen. We can do it, and we must, that's not a question, or we can wait another 10 years. It's now we got to do it. You know, everybody from around the world listening right here on Third Phase Moon, everybody is very interested in this. The response was huge right here on YouTube in regards to this video that you shared with us. We really appreciate it. What can the viewers and the people listening from around the world, what can they do to get this technology out right now, like you're saying? Well, first of all, I think most viewers have newspaper reporters, television, radio, is to tell them or ask them, please look at the website, look for yourself, see what we are offering, and then support us. Let's hit the world with the news. Let's get it out there before it's too late and I'm gone. 
you're exactly right. You know, everybody listening right now, we have the link below to the website, to Mr. Searle's website and the information. Put in your donations. Do whatever it takes to get the funding to get this out because the way he's explaining it, the way I'm listening, it's like, you know, 10 years from now might be too late. The powers may be might want to shut this down. And if we don't act now, then we may never have a chance. You know, Mr. Searle, how old are you right now? And um, do you think we could get uh, this disclosed out to the public and get this on a mass scale? You know, in 1963, 1968, this should have been on the market. Unfortunate, for some reason, it get greedy. The person that thinks, that, oh, I can do this, I don't need John, so I can do this for half the price in half the time. And I have no idea how to do it. But they, their action of stealing the idea from you to make themselves rich is all through greed and ignorance. Ignorance because they have no idea how to make it and greed because they think they're going to make millions of dollars. And everyone suffers through this stuff. Stupid behavior. Mr. It's a part of the people. Let's work together. Let's make it happen. All together, it will happen. But on my own, I can't do nothing against the world that is just greedy and ignorant. You know, we love your passion here and your your motivation to, you know, help the world out because the global energy crisis has kind of maximized here in the past 10 years it's coming to a peak at this at this time in our in our world right now you know what can you explain to us about this machine quickly about what is its capabilities let's talk about maybe powering up a city how large would it have to be and is it possible to you know power up a city with this free energy device that you created how large is the SEG and could you power a city with it well, yeah. The beauty about the energy, you can stack smaller units on top of each other in a vertical col column. It, they do not interfere with each other. So this is a beautiful machine. If you power the city, you can make them one meter diameter and then put, put ten in a stack, a vertical stack, and feed the whole city. The, the things we've got to remember is that, okay, it costs money today, costs have gone up shocking. But there's no wear or tear. There should be no reason why it should stop before time stops. So it's, it's an investment that you hand down to your generation. They hand it to them and on and on. In your car, if you don't like the body tenure, rip it off. Body on you like, carry on. You do not have to replace the driving source. You just have to check the motors on the wheels every two years. That the insulation, all right. But the power unit, there is nothing you have to do. It looks after itself. And it cleans, keep the air in the car perfect, clean, more oxygen, make you feel good. And you absolutely feel great on any long trip you do because you're not stressed by the positive state around you. You've got a negative state around you. And that's where the brain is happy. So, John, you're talking about a power device that goes into a, a standard electric automobile and powers that automobile. How long will it last? Well, it lasts you and your family, their family, their family. Well, let's take it. When time stops, the engine will run out. There is no wear or tear involved. The only machine I know of in the world that can do that. They all will produce heat. This does not produce heat. It produces cool conditions. Therefore, you do not lose energy from it, which you do from suddenly getting very hot. Hey Blake, uh, if you don't mind, Brad here. Uh, did you guys get some questions on your uh, comment board from that little? That's a good question. Let's uh, you know, let's go to some of the comments right now of uh, what we we've, we've got right here at uh, 
third phase of moon just stand by and we're gonna take a look at some of the comments and see if there's any questions for Sorrel you know from faithful future he says the step into the anti-gravity one must be curling left and right the product on uh, you know the vacuum seems like an airplane and let's see and you know if let's see it's like an orbit do you think some of this technology basically what I think faithful future is saying is do you think this technology could uh, you know make anti-gravity uh, you know devices or you know get get traveling faster without the high energy cost for air uh, air travel Z well, does and he's had it for over 60 to, years uh, John Searle is known so as the godfather of free energy the entire zero question, point but, energy uh, and as far as the anti-gravity goes uh, that's really one of those phrases that uh, is misapplied uh, to Searle's work now the SEG in an overloaded state that is, uh, the electrons build up to such a level that it begins to have a problem in terms of the Earth's gravitational force. It is not an anti-gravity device by any stretch. It is actually an inverse relationship to the magnetic field of planet Earth. And at the same time, you have a vortex effect in the Earth's atmosphere. Why? Because in the Earth's atmosphere you have lots of moisture, and as we know, moisture is a dipole molecule. It has a plus and a minus side. And that magnetic device is spinning at such a rate of speed, it begins to turn the atmosphere as if there's an inverted tornado on the top and on the bottom of the device. So you have two effects really going on in terms of relationship to the Earth. It, it, will, it will actually have its own relativity and therefore react to the Earth's gravitational force, but it also spins the atmosphere in such a way that the atmosphere, like a standard tornado, is sucking it up. It just it sucks it up through the atmosphere. It sort of pulls it up. John, carry on with that. But the thing, it's a perfect vehicle shape for space travel. And of course, in the air, what happens is we have electrons slide out at the pins around the vessel, there are 64 pins that discharges these electrons. Now, when they discharge, they come out as photons. Now, photons are trapped in the magnetic field around the equator of the craft. Now, when they bump against each other, they become negative ions. They are probably black photons contained in it, but these uh, negative ions are heavier than the normal ones. And therefore, we got some heavy electrons or black photons going back into the craft which has lots more energy, and thus we are using energy we spent, and we just restored it back to the planet, and it's given us it back. And scientists said, in that case, when it returns to your car, it got no work. Well, let's face this way, you got a big dam, your water is rushing down, it turns the cups of a big wheel, that in turn turns an axle to a generator, produces electricity, works presses, bump holes in metal, and then a pump, pump the water back to the reservoir. Are you telling me, as expert, all those holes will suddenly be filled up again with those metal part wastes, as if nothing's happened? Because that is what you're telling me is happening with the IGV. This is ridiculous to make such statement as a scientist. Here is something that could be looked into, not stamped on as impossible. Why? Because you're not one of them. And they got to protect their image. They don't want John so living in a country, well, Taurus or whatever you like to call it, telling them he could do something they can't. And the reason why they can't do it is because they don't want to look at it. Because they can do it, they get loads for what they're doing, their loads will stop if they created this technology. And they 
through they won't have a job. But the STG will come and they've got to learn to be retrained to do other work. Hey, Professor Searle, could you explain to me when you started to, uh, you know, come up with this design 60 years ago and what inspired you to uh, come up with the concept? What, what inspired you to come up with the SEG? Well, it's dreams. I had two types of dreams and they came each one twice a year. So I called them dream one, dream two, dream one, dream two. So you had four dreams each year for six years. Basically, that's some of the mathematics of how to work the SEG out. What he was telling me, it's a simple game, hopscotch. Uh, I, I'm sure you played that as a child at school. It's a simple game. And this always came up in the first dream. I'm always standing in square two. Why? Why was my pebble always in square three? Why was I about to cross over to square four and I frozen? And all the children playing with me are gone. Now, the steamroller being the only motorized miracle I knew at the time is coming towards me many times bigger. That is going to cross me, going to slap me into the ground. I wake up screaming. Now, when we look at this steamroller there, we see that it has two giant rollers on the axle, which change it then. It's telling you the two outer segments of the roller set only steers it along the bar. When we do a full sorted roller, which I did, we find that when you let go at the end of the bar, it tends to move and twists and locks. Now, I said to John Thomas when I was demonstrating it, what would you do? I've no idea. Well, I looked at my dream and we always got eight squares. So what happens if I cut this bar in eight separate parts and magnetize each one as an individual magnetized uh, material? I did. Then I had him that set of that. I said, no, you put that on that bar. Now you let go, and what happened? It goes up and down, up and down. Because the outer two segments are steering it along that bar. That's why it will never come off. And the scientists claiming it will shoot off if it moves. It does not, because the plate as I term it, it's like planet Earth. The roller set are like the moon. They keep to the same laws and the same rules. So I knew that the rollers will never fly off, no matter what speed they go at. And we have demonstrated that at the lab. I don't know if you've ever been to the lab and seen the demonstration. The rollers will never, never fly off. They can't. Wow, there's so much information we come that's coming in here, and we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg. This is just a little sample of what information we're going to get from Professor John Searle. And we really want to thank uh, you know Bradley Lockerman for setting this up, this amazing interview all the way from the UK. Mr. Professor John Searle, we really appreciate uh, you coming forward and sharing your machine with us and look forward to more updates coming up this week. Thank you. It's an honor to come on your show. Let's give the power to the people now. Power to the people. Incredible. And if anybody out there has captured anything amazing in regards to UFOs, you can contact us at Third Phase of Moon via Skype or Facebook. My name is Blake Cousins, and we'll see you again next time.